so next up we have um, Jillian Chang. Chan, sorry, um, who's the manager for COVID-19 Airport uh, Transformation Office at the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore. Hi, hi, good afternoon or good morning, everybody. Um, just to check that my screen can be seen well. Yeah, and I will just uh, proceed if there are no issues. Okay, uh, thanks everyone for joining uh, the webinar today. And I'd just like to uh, extend a, a thank you to Affinity for inviting myself and other speakers to speak uh, today. So um, today I will be bringing you through uh, how the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, together with the Ministry of Transport, has really worked to open up international travel in a safe and secure manner. So, um, so I'm Julian and I'm in the uh, airport economic uh, airport operations regulation uh, division within the CAAS, and uh, we've been working really closely with Affinity and um, other stakeholders like the airlines and the airport um, to implement some opening measures that you see today. Um, and without further ado, let me take you through uh, the presentation. So I'm in the COVID-19 Airport Transformation Office. And I think the name is really quite apt because I would say that the work has really transformed with the advent of, of COVID. And um, I've been in this division for only about a year and a half, uh, but I think I've seen quite a lot of things um, and a lot of key steps in Singapore's uh, reopening. So we actually began in the second half of last year with uh, what we call unilateral opening into Singapore. Um, and this means that we allow travelers from other countries to come into Singapore without a quarantine. And this was quite significant because it was the sort of like the, the first few travel lanes that Singapore opened to, to tourists since the start of COVID in um, February of last year. Yep, so we began with certain countries like um, New Zealand, Brunei, Australia, and Vietnam. And then we move towards uh, the first half of this year, where the CAAS worked closely with Affinity on the digital verification of pre-departure test PDT results. Uh, and then this was adopted by many airlines, for instance, um, Singapore Airlines, as Elvin has shared, um, to verify travelers' uh, test results digitally. And to the arrow is where we are today. So if you have um, seen the news and if you're keen to come to Singapore, uh, you would have um, come across the vaccinated travel lanes, which I'll share a bit more later, uh, where we allow travelers to come in without quarantine as long as they are fully vaccinated. And beyond, so I put a question mark here on further reopening because as you might know, the uh, Omicron variant a uh, slight derailment of opening plans, but I'm pretty sure the industry is resilient and we'll be able to tie uh, through this variant just as we have for um, the other variants previously. So a quick overview of the vaccinated travel lane. Um, so we have opened to about 25 countries to date uh, and travelers have to produce a proof of vaccination before they can travel on this lane. Uh, Short-term visitors and long-term pass holders actually need to apply for what we call a VTP, Vaccinated Travel Pass. So uh, along with Affinity, the Ministry of Transport and CAAS have actually been working with various countries to uh, digitally verify the vaccination certificates of those countries. And I am proud to say that I think progress is, has been great so far. Literally, we've been reaching out to various countries and finding out what certificates they issue and how can we integrate their QR codes for automatic recognition. Okay, so the next two slides, I'll share a little bit more on the entire passenger journey uh, to enter the vaccinated travel lane. So first we begin with, um, so this slide shows you the step-by-step -step guide for short-term visitors and long-term pass holders. Uh, there are a lot of things through on the slide and um, it is a complicated process for travelers, but as far as possible, we try to make it uh, easily understandable um, on our website when travelers need to apply for the pass and also a checklist for them to uh, go through before they, they fly into Singapore. So I just like to highlight the points in, uh, in the red boxes here. 
um, short-term visitors have to apply for the vaccinated travel pass, and that is where they upload QR codes of their vaccination certificate for digital verification. Okay, and um, later on, they will also need to show uh, at this step here in pre-departure, they need to submit an S Singapore arrival card where they uh, where they may also need to upload their vaccination QR code. Um, at check-in, they need to show their vaccination proof to airlines. And same thing on arrival as well. So I think what I want to highlight from this slide is really that um, vaccination is really a key safeguard of the vaccinated travel lane. And it's very important for us to be able to verify uh, the certificates that travelers present. Yeah. The next slide um, is quite similar, but this is the process for Singapore citizens and permanent residents who do not need to apply for the vaccinated travel pass. Uh, they still do need to show their vaccination proof um, on arrival and also to airlines before they depart for Singapore. Yeah. Uh, this, these infographics can, uh, will actually be on our, uh, what we call the Safe Travel uh, Office website. And you can also take a look if you're keen on actually coming into Singapore. And we hope that it, the steps are clear uh, enough to follow. Yeah, and I think I want to talk a little bit more on sort of how we verify and also how do travellers present proof of vaccinations. So I think some of the previous speakers did mention, right, you know, today there are so many requirements for travellers to meet before they can uh, board a plane. And uh, for instance, in the instance of Singapore, where we, where we require people to apply for a vaccinated travel pass, how do they know what exactly they need to upload? You know, where's their QR code? You know, do you know for for the those people who are a bit older, the old folks, do they even know what a, what a QR code is, for instance? Yeah. So in light of all these uh, concerns and uh, I think some issues faced, we actually did up a very detailed uh, set of sort of frequently asked quest asked questions on our Safe Travel Office website. You can find a link here where we actually go through step by step for uh, various countries' certificates, where to find your QR code, how you're going to upload it, um, you know, even how you can verify your certificate before you upload it so that you don't panic when you face errors on the portal. So um, just on this slide that you can see, we actually have a, a table on our website to tell you, you know, if you have a proof of vaccination issued in Australia, for instance, um, what where can you find your QR code, how many QR codes you need to upload, uh, if depending on the number of doses you have received, and how can you verify your code yourself. So in this case, you can use the IKO VDS uh, checker on your Android or um, iPhone to, to check that your QR code is valid before you upload it. So I think um, this really has come about because we have encountered a lot, a lot of issues uh, surfaced by travelers who, who just... Um, can't seem to upload their codes properly, can't seem to, to find the right documentation, for instance. Um, and I'd just like to highlight that this has been a very, uh, I guess, a very eye-opening experience. Because can you imagine for the various countries, like we are opening to Thailand, for instance, you know, or Cambodia, some of their certificates are in you know, uh, the local languages and they're not in English. So how do travelers actually troubleshoot? Um, how do they key in their names, for instance, if they have a Thai name or if they have a, a name with special characters, how do they keep it? So all these things we actually look through along with Affinity um, and, and see how we can actually make this process uh, user-friendly and to really address the various issues that come along the process. So I would say this is an iterative process. We are trying to work on it um, uh, as issues come along. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so I, did, I think this is really just to share the, the range of issues that us as regulators also face um, when we try to get people to surface proofs of their documentation, for instance. Uh, and I think before I end this presentation, because my time is almost up, I, I just like to extend a shout out to the various speakers on this call as well. And I think I was particularly inspired by the, the solutions provided by some of the uh, organizations like Amadeus, right, to how to streamline the passenger journey and you know, put all the requirements literally on the same app to make it easier for travelers. And I just like to say that for us uh, in the government, I think we're happy 
uh, to work with uh, private parties to really see how we can you know, further improve the experience. And uh, well, as usual, if anyone has any comments or questions, yeah, I'll be happy to take them. And if you do think of uh, coming to Singapore, I, I, do hope to, uh, I do hope that your experience will be a good one. Uh, yeah, and if anything, yeah, just do refer to our website for the updated information. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to hear the perspective of uh, government and um, hopefully more governments will join the conversation so we can create broader alignment.